Hello and welcome to this video on the most common shorthand for fertilizer, NPK or nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. And knowing what these numbers mean and how to use them to best effect is essential for a good bonsai. That is because you should be fertilizing your bonsai regularly. That is regularly but in the right way. You can't fertilize your bonsai in the right way without knowing how to use the NPK ratio. First there is a simple meaning. Often you see the NPK ratio as a series of numbers. Something like 5105 is common. That is 5% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 5% potassium. The rest of this is either trace elements or, more likely, a filler to bulk out the fertilizer so you pay for a lot of relatively useless material. Realistically, it is to make handling easier, but nonetheless, there's always the argument that they're profiting out of selling you what is effectively nothing when it's sold by weight rather than volume. The advantages to the material that bulks this out and makes it rather larger is that it's somewhat easier to handle and spread more conveniently. That is, whilst you may be spreading the same amount of the essential nutrients and in this case chemicals around to fertilize your bonsai, you only really need to handle so much at a time. It's a little bit more easy to measure rather than having to get out teaspoons for every individual tree. The first chemical, or more accurately element, is nitrogen, and it's the first number referenced in, well, the NPK naming scheme. It is one of, if not the most important of the elements when it comes to the plant's foliage and development, and particularly the colouring. Nitrogen is somewhat essential for chlorophyll production. This is also why it's rather essential for the development of, well, leaf structure, as that's where you find most of the chlorophyll. It's especially useful, let's say, where we're talking about grasses, but most bonsai aren't a grass. As a result, you want to try and avoid the excessive use of it, but signs of not having enough present are that the plant begins to yellow, and that's an indicator that the chlorophyll is not being made due to a nitrogen deficiency. The second indicator is phosphorus, the P in MPK. This again is important, but certainly not as important as nitrogen is, arguably. The reason for this is that it's important in the development of roots, the development of flowers, and ultimately fruit. If you have a flowering species, you're going to want a lot of phosphorus, and for exactly that reason, to get the flowers to bloom. However, you don't necessarily need it as much, particularly for species that well don't have flowers or fruit. It will, however, contribute to and support the development of roots. As such, you still need some of it, if not as much. The last, potassium, or the K in NPK, is not as important again. Arguably, it's the uh, next lowest on the rung of important elements. What it does is contribute to the vigor and health of your bonsai. And this is more like a health tonic type scenario, where if the plant's already healthy, it's not going to do as much whereas if the plant is somewhat weak, or if it's going through a period of extreme growth, it will support that and make the plant a little more resilient to anything that could happen to it. It also has a role to play in the movement of nutrients, particularly the movement of water carrying those nutrients. Most MPK fertilizers will also carry several trace elements, and the trace elements of note will include things like sulfur, and this is important for amino acids, proteins, and enzymes. You'll also find magnesium, and again, this is part of the chlorophyll system, and calcium. Calcium is important as a cofactor for enzymes and things like the cellular membrane. Um, ultimately though, most fertilizers won't give you a lot of detail on these trace elements in particular, but all trace elements and other content of the fertilizer may or may not be listed unless your local region has regulations around the labeling of fertilizers. For example, we have a rather explicit breakdown of what is in the fertilizer by its either percentage or actual weight per what you could consider a serve. The kind of fertilizers you can get cover a, a range of applications. You first have your balanced fertilizers. These have a effectively equal ratio of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It could be something like 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 5, or 1, 1, 1. The exact numbers aren't important so long as they're the same. The reason they're called balanced, or sometimes complete fertilizers, is because everything is in equal proportion. 
By contrast, you obviously have incomplete fertilizers. Incomplete fertilizers generally either have nearly no concentration of one of these three, or it's significantly lower than the other two. And even then, between the other two, there could be a drastic difference in ratio. For example, you might find that you have a 10-10-0, or 10-0-10. That would be 10% nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, and 10% potassium. Or 10% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 0% potassium. These incomplete fertilizers it can be useful, but generally speaking, they're only really helpful if your soil already has an excess of one of the three things you'd be adding otherwise. And this is why they're used. For example, if you already have a organic matter rich soil, you may not need to add much in the way of nitrogen. Or if you already have a slow release fertilizer, you may only need to add something like potassium and phosphorus to support the development of the plant and the development of flowers. That's because your slow release fertilizer would already have nitrogen within it. When we look at various potted plants, there's a range of fertilizers that are recommended. These can range anywhere from a 24-8-16 ratio to a 15-30-15 ratio. Generally speaking, the preference, let's say, for things like phosphorus over potassium and nitrogen is because they're potted plants that don't necessarily need to put on a lot of leafy growth. And this is generally indoor plants. However, for bonsai, bonsai are neither indoor plants, nor are they necessarily supposed to be considered as potted plants. This is one reason why you generally try to have at least some nitrogen content, or at least significantly more, at some times of the year to support growth. This is also where we need to talk about balancing the effect of fertilizing your bonsai. Your bonsai will, for the most part, be fertilized regularly throughout the year, barring the extreme ends of autumn and possibly the extremely early part of spring. You'll find that from, let's say, a late winter through to early spring, you may fertilize very infrequently, and mostly in preparation for the plant coming out of dormancy and beginning to grow. Through spring, at least early spring, you're likely to be giving it a lot more fertilizer a lot more frequently. This is to support all that growth. However, if you give it too much nitrogen at this point in time, you'll find that you get lots of long growth with relatively short nodes between the leaves. This is also why you need to try and give it less nitrogen, but more things like potassium and phosphorus. You also want to then taper off the amount of nitrogen at the end of summer and into autumn, and this is so that your tree doesn't put all of its energy and growth into new leaves that will be discarded before very long. Generally speaking, you can break down the fertilizers as a ratio into three discrete categories. Your tropical and to some degree subtropical trees, deciduous and conifers. For the most part, a tropical and subtropical trees given that they're meant to be active all year round, are fairly balanced the entire year. However, they're not really given, let's say, as much fertilizer, if any, over winter. Deciduous are much the same, except during winter they go completely dormant. And so where you can get away with giving tropical and subtropical trees some fertilizer to help support them during winter, because they're not entirely dormant if they go dormant at all, deciduous bonsai just don't. The conifers, however, are slightly different in that you'll find that they need a lot more support at the start of spring by comparison to other species. Their growth is extremely sporadic in that regard. However, over winter, they also have some need for support, but they don't need very strong fertilizer use, and they particularly don't like nitrogen at that time. This again brings us back to the timing and use of fertilizer. If you use a high nitrogen fertilizer, let's say a 10-6-6 ratio in spring, you'll find that you get lots of leafy growth, but not necessarily flowers or fruit. And this is because the plant has put all of its energy into new leaves, branches, and similar. Whereas if you go something like a 6-6-6 ratio or a 1-1-1 ratio, you get a somewhat more balanced and better result. That's because the plant has chosen, because of its fertilizing routine, 
not to grow branches and leaves at the expense of flowers and similar. You obviously want to change this entering into summer where the tree tends to put on less leafy growth primarily because it's too damn hot and instead rely on giving it something that will support its structure, the phosphorus and potassium particularly. Then once you enter autumn, Keep your phosphorus and potassium levels elevated, but drop the nitrogen, again, to prevent growing leaves that will be discarded. Of course, you could try tackling this in a slightly different way, but you'll get slightly different results as well. Rather than focusing solely on the numbers, so to say, that is, the ratio of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, you can instead look at trying to space out your fertilizing more, both at the start of the growing season and at the end of the growing season. That is, at the very start of spring, you have, say, a week or more between using it, and as you go more towards the peak of summer, the time frame between using it gets shorter. Now, a week is obviously going to be an extreme example. It's more likely that you would, say, apply fertilizer once a month in early spring, and then gradually bring that to once a week towards the end of spring, then space it out again over summer in order to just support the tree, and then slowly wind down over autumn. This would allow you to get as much benefit out of it as possible without having to change fertilizer. However, you need to have a balanced fertilizer for that. That is something with a more or less consistent ratio of a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, or something closer to that. Once you start getting to the extremes of, say, 24, 8, 16, 15, 30s, or similar ratios of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, you're not going to have that work anywhere near as well. As you can see, the ratio of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is important. Too much nitrogen or too early can cause more harm than good, and you have to prune back growth and you lose other parts of the bonsai that would otherwise have benefited. Excess phosphorus might help the growth of flowers or fruit, but could just as easily salt out. Potassium is very much the same. If you add unneeded salts, you will find that they simply come out of the pot or accumulate on the top as a thin white film. It's very much like humans. Too much of a good thing is an expensive waste of resources. It applies to uh, nutrients and vitamins for humans as much as it does to nutrients and fertilizer for plants. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please do post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.